Hello again. Hey everyone. Welcome back uh, for the third episode in which we are deep diving using ChatGPT for change management related tasks for an ERP implementation. Come on, we share with comms too a stakeholder analysis oh we my... can use if I'm many. It's not yeah. just change. Okay, okay. It's a Venn diagram. Yeah, we okay. can share, we can both do these things. <laughs> I'm doing a comms role right now, so I feel like I hope that my like yeah, my co-leads don't see this because I will be put to the stake. So uh <laughs> You always wait for us change people to give you that mm -hmm. stakeholder analysis. There's well. comms and change. No, yeah, there we go. Well, hopefully we can okay. show you how we can do it quicker so we don't need to fight over who does the, the heavy lifting. Yeah, exactly. So what are we doing today? Tell us. Well, early on in any initiative like this example today we can talk about is um, activating an ERP module uh, for billing. We'll say we're using SAP today and we'll talk about the case of maybe we are also outsourcing um, mm -hmm. billing to another party to support us. That'll mean that employees will be impacted, we'll be bringing in new employees from a third party, um, effectively outsourcing um, this process. Perfect. So why stakeholder map, right? Why do yeah. we care about this? Well, traditionally we look at stakeholder map from a two by two perspective. So looking at elements of low and high power, low and high interest. Um, why we do this is really to give us a mental map visual of where our most impacted stakeholders lay. So not to interject, but mm. you are the change expert, mm. director of change. My God. Okay, we're not doing a resume run through. However, why would we want to automate something like this? It takes time. Mm. If you know, if you're coming on to a client to you know, set up a PowerPoint, format it, you know, mm -hmm. set up a, a data set, etc. It just takes time. If we can already get the inputs through our interviews, um, score our different, you know, key stakeholder groups or individual stakeholders, and then just have a tool to pull that data and present a nice stakeholder map, why not? Mm. So before we actually dig into ChatGPT mm. and generate the stuff, it's probably a good reminder for everyone watching, including ourselves, to know that uh, this is for inspiration and you should not put in any sort of document that has any sensitive company data into ChatGPT. So for example purposes, you've done a dummy data set. Well, actually, ChatGPT did this for me, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, so just giving you a very, very simple um, data set or a stakeholder list, often we'd get this generated from uh, Workday or whatever HR mm -hmm. solutions use along with your HR partner providing you with that data. Um, so what we see here is name of the person, their email, um, what stakeholder group they fall into. Again, this is a BPO example where we're outsourcing billing to another team and another organization, as well as implementing a new software module. Um, where the stakeholders group fall within the organization, so what function they fall in, and where they are located. Nice. Often we'd see a lot more additional columns to the right, like who they report to, who their HR is, etc. Again, what's really great about doing this is you can really slice and dice the data, create distribution lists, et cetera, et cetera, as well as um, count, look at your impact of number of people across different geographies. So Great. And I see that you have a second tab here called Stakeholder Groups. Yes, so ChatGPT also helped me to summarize um, the power, so um, how powerful or how much influence these uh, groups of people have mm -hmm. in the organization as well as how interested they would be in the change. So are they affected by this day by day? Does it really rock their world? So mm. ChatGPT GPT uh, helped me to summarize um, the scores here as well as gave me an overall count for the stakeholder groups. Nice. Okay, so now it's time to rock and roll. Rock and roll, we're not in Kansas anymore. We, we are headed towards Party City. So uh, uh, what we want to do for those of us that have ChatGPT4, we're going to be using ChatGPT4 Code Interpreter today. So um, just like in a previous video, all you have to do to enable Code uh, Interpreter if you're a ChatGPT4 user is to go over ChatGPT4 and then press Code Interpreter. So once we're there, we're going to upload our Excel file. So we'll put in uh, Casey's Excel file here, and then we're going to use this prompt. Now I'm going to, of course, put the prompt in the description of this video. So if you want to try along, that is fantastic. So our prompt is please generate a two by two power interest matrix grid based on the role from the stakeholder groups tab. 
make a different color circle for each of the rolls. Please make a circle depending on how many people are in the numbers column. Great, and again, we want to use this as a mental map. Firstly, we can present to senior stakeholders, show them where the impacted groups are, what the relative sizes are, um, and we also want it to keep us honest during the, the change in comms journey to say, okay, are we focusing on the right stakeholders? Nice, nice. Great, so let's, let's go. Okay, so here is the... <laughs> we were just saying there's no math in this world that can explain what just happened here. No, God bless. I think this is, you know, this is what happens, though, the critical thinking, uh, you know, um, to r define and refine. So let's, let's, let's update this prompt. Okay. So the lovely thing with ChatGPT is, of course, we want to refine. So we've come up with this um, prompt to further refine. Please refine so that the two by two matrix is split into four quadrants because we don't see that uh, there's quadrants at the five mark that will make it nice. The scale ends at 10. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's no Stereo member that has 10 or 12 out of 10 power. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe that's for another episode. <laughs> The stuff they don't want you to know. Um, yeah, and labels by the X's to def uh, define the number of individuals pertaining to the role and name the quadrants accordingly to the power interest matrix. Let's go ahead and press enter and see how that turns out. So, just over 11 seconds. That's pretty good. Not bad. Okay, let's look at the output. There we go. This is something that we're... we're at, what, I don't know what this is. Let's burn it. But this is something that we're more used to. Okay, so we do have the circle sizes based on users. There's circles now, which is great. Um, we have the quadrants named correctly, keep informed, keep players monitor, keep satisfied. Um, the bubble sizes look commensurate to the population size. So what happens if though we wanna update this? Let's say that our company acquires a different company or if we need to update information, do you think that we can do this? Absolutely, just yeah. update the raw data. Yeah. With the changes are, you know, pull from workday, get a refresh in data, and your map gets updated, commensurate with the number of people impacted. Mm. Uh, potentially as well, we might see some cases where, you know, in this example, we thought, you know, indirect impacted employees, we didn't think mm -hmm. they would be too difficult from a power perspective, but be, maybe they start to put up a fight. They don't want to see their colleagues leave. We can just okay. update the, the power in the source file and then regenerate the map. That's perfect. Yeah. So with all this being said, this was a nice handy dandy outcome. What's next? Yeah, we can start to look at the engagement matrix even ahead mm. of doing the change impact assessment, um, ahead of design being completed and really understanding what's changing down to the detail. Mm. We should start to engage and do some light communication. So I think this is the perfect time to get some advice from ChatGPT on an engagement matrix. Let's do it. All right, so there's probably a few parameters we would like um, some help with ChatGPT. So mm -hmm. if we can get ChatGPT to look at our source file, typically what we're going to see in an engagement matrix is the stakeholder group name, the number of stakeholders, key locations or highest proportion of locations. Um, we'd like to know at a high level what the typical um, change impacts would be. And then we'd like ChatGPT to lay out who would be a good relationship owner of that stakeholder group. And then I'd like some advice from ChatGPT on mm -hmm. what kind of channels we should use or mechanisms to engage with these different stakeholder groups. Perfect. Let's do it. Okay, so now to put this in ChatGPT, mm -hmm. we have a pretty chunky prompt. We do. I mean, hey, we want to start with a good baseline, mm -hmm. especially if we're under time pressure at a hectic client. We have lots going on. Let's get ChatGPT to give us some recommendations and then we can evaluate if they make sense or not for this context. Let's go ahead and rock and or roll. So this isn't exactly what we expected. I love the table format. Um, the first few columns are correct. What I think we need to do is ask ChatGPT to act as our advisor mm -hmm. and give mm -hmm. the you know best yep. practice recommendation. Okay, so we did see the output was to be determined. Yes. And that's one of the things with ChatGPT is there 
I mean, you know, to use it as a tool, you will need to iterate. So uh, taking a look at our iterative prompt, mm -hmm. um, we came up with essentially, please act as our advisor and, you know, propose some of the key information and recommendations for each of these fields. Okay, now it's putting it in the table for us. So actually, this is not looking too bad as a baseline, just as it's generating. Um, yeah, of course, we look great at the bottom, Steerco typical strategic alignment, um, yeah, Steerco meetings are good, uh, summaries mm -hmm. for board, that's actually a really good recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, if we scroll up right to the top, you know, BPO employees, um, they've got it a bit wrong in that um, the BPO employees would actually be taking on the work, they wouldn't mm. be laid off. So again, you do have to put a critical mm. mind to it. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, you know, they're noting good things about meetings, trainings, having discussions. Um, so that's quite good. Um, it looks like almost when you see the impacted employees, you could flip the key impacts with the BPO employees. Yeah. And I like even um, it catches a nuance. Uh, for example, if they indirectly impacted employees, they probably don't need heavy training, etc. I like that they call out just, you know, awareness events and yeah. department meetings. So really great start. Okay, now with all of this being said, Casey, where do we go from here? Well, this is a really good start. We have our mental map, our stakeholder map. Mm -hmm. We have a very um, initial stakeholder engagement matrix. I think we have enough to start talking to the BPO teams, mm -hmm. understanding some of the change impacts and, and diving into change impact. Nice. So is change impact going to be our next video? You betcha. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Bye. make this an ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> yep. <sighs> that looks f***ed up.com. <laughs>